Good evening guys. Um, so a while back we started this macro keyboard together on the live stream and I've completed it. So the uh, only thing I changed was I removed one of the USBs. I was just running out of space and components etc. But I also made a simpler version. So I made one like this as well. The reason for that is I want to cater for both people. The people that just want to have as a keyboard and one that will want the USB hub as well. Because the USB hub and the chip and all that stuff is quite expensive, USB-C, I thought I'll make a simpler version for people who just want the macro board, uh, and this will be a cheaper version to make if you want to make it yourself. Um, I'm actually going to order this board now, so I thought I'll take you guys through the steps, what I do when ordering a board, um, just the Gerbers, uh, what layers I choose, and then I'm also going to show you how I choose the components to order, and how I order the components. So if you want to know how to get this production ready, then this is the video for you. So let's just go through what this macro keyboard actually did. Um, so if we go to schematic, we've got a STM32. This can be our brains behind the operations, um, our Cherry MX keys. We've got a voltage regulator, a sound in interminator, <laughs> it sounds detector basically. So this will basically detect if someone's behind you talking when you have your earphones on gaming and can't hear a thing and just the LEDs. So it's just a simpler version. I have some test connectors so I can test it. I'm going to populate this board myself, so I'm just going to order the bare PCBs right now. So there you can see. Uh, the screen will also display information we want with the I2C. Just sold it. This will be a development board we buy. There's my circuit, my microphone. I'll solder onto that. Uh, USB in, push buttons, your computer will read it. And there's the STM32 uh, programming. Okay, so I think we're ready. This is actually a four layer board, um, so I'll show you. Mounting holes. Great. So for you to be able to order this from a company like JLPCB or, or PCBWay, you have to generate a file called Kerbis. So to do that in Altium, you go File, Fabricate Outputs, and Gerber Files. So I've made a video about KiCad how to do this. So if you if you're on KiCad, you can just go to that video, and we'll show you. But the Gerbers is generic term for all PCB designs, and then you just have to choose the layers, and this will plot no layer. <laughs> so what we want is you can see on the left hand side here, we've got a GTO which is the silk so overlay front silk that's the images. So the 3 by 3 V bus ground that is your front silk. We want that. Your paste, I'm going to maybe order a stencil. So your paste is uh, the size of your stencil that you want to put the solder paste. Your mask is your mask opening um, where your pads are. Uh, copper we want. We want a power plane in the middle, ground. Um, bottom layer, so go by bottom layer. It's my bottom copper. Now it's the same, but just for the bottom. Uh, courtyards are just for mechanical. Uh, really not important for PCB. Edge cuts <laughs> is important for PCBs, but it's not important for Gerber generation. And then edge cuts is your board outline. That's important. And yes, I think that's it. Uh, mechanical layer. You can just have a look. Um, so if you go to PCB Way or JLPCB, they actually have tutorials how exactly to do this and what they require. I'm just seeing if I miss something. Otherwise, I'll just make double sure. Fabrication. So this is files that you'll give to the manufacturer and then they'll be able to make the board for you. Um, you, you can't have too much. See, this signal there is not important. See, that's part already. I think that's it. I think everything that we selected is the only thing they need. So silk, copper, mask, planes, assembly, your board outline. I think that is that. Good. Now you push OK and we'll generate the Gerbers. You'll see actually Altium opens up a new window where you can view the Gerbers you just generated. So once you generate the Gerbers, you'll get a file like this, part of Camtastic. And there you can actually see, which is current, um, all the layers that your PCB manufacturer will be able to get. So you can, if you make it current, it will always be on top. So the manufacturer will also have a double check for you in case something is wrong. Uh, another important thing you have to do is generate the drill files. So the drill file is just 
the holes the machine has to draw, fabricate output, NC draw files. Uh, just have a look at these. This is how it has to be. Uh, okay, and then you'll see it's all the holes on the PCB. So these files are normally just stored in your project outputs of your uh, project. So where your project folder is, there's a folder called project outputs, and your Gerbis will be there. I normally just go like this, check what's the latest, and you can just take all this Gerbis, uh, right click, send to create a zip. Uh, simple Gerbis. And that's how you make Gerbis. So now we'll take this to JLPCB and we can order it. So once you're JLPCB, uh, this is actually the home page on the left, uh, you just easily go quote now and you just add your Gerbis. So if all goes well, my PCB should pop up here. There we go. So it already detected the size of it, which is very good. It detected as a four layer, which is good. Um, so once it detects like this, you can be pretty confident that the files you've given the manufacturer is actually correct. Um, then you can change some settings here. Uh, so I only want five because I'm gonna first test it because I sometimes make mistakes. I'm gonna make it black. I just like black, it looks nicer. And that's about it. And all I have to do now is save to cart. So then you would just click check out security. Uh, you can see that the price is seven dollars, but just be careful or not careful. Um, just know that it's not seven dollars total. So once you click check out secure securely, it will take your next page where you have to pay for shipping. And shipping can be anywhere between eighteen to twenty five dollars. So that gets added. So what I normally do is I have multiple designs that I've done, for, let's say for the month, and I'll put those together in one cart because you only pay shipping once. So if you can add about five PCBs, it works out very nicely. So maybe do that as well. Uh, that saves a lot of money and it's just much nicer. So, so now that we've ordered the PCBs, we need components. So in the next next part of the video, I'll show you guys how, how I generate a bomb in Altium. So if you generate a bomb in Altium or Kika, it doesn't matter, use that bomb for a quicker way to get the components. So let's do that. So now that we ordered our PCB, we actually need components because the PCB won't work without any components. Uh, to do that, we just go right click, add new project, active bomb. Altium can get quite fancy with the stuff, but I will not go into much detail. Uh, you can see actually it goes online and can see up to date revisions and uh, manufacturers, etc. And that's by the name. So you can see the name here. So these are all the parts that I would like Which is quite nice. So we can output this. To out, output this file or to be able to use this bill of materials, we can go to reports, bill of materials, and we can say, um, yeah. So, nice thing about Altium is you can create your own template for uh, Excel spreadsheet and tell exactly where to put what values, uh, but I'm just going to use the generic one. So, you can choose uh, currencies. So, Altium is very, very nice in this way. So, let's say export. Uh, we'll keep it uh, in our file where our Gerbers are. Bomb, save. You can see it, a keypad macro bomb. So if you open it, uh, <laughs> I don't have Excel paid, so I might, let's see what happens. Anyway, and you can see it popped up quite nicely. Um, the name is actually my manufacturer part number, the quantity per board, very, very cool. So what we're gonna do now is use this Excel spreadsheet to import it into a website where they will show us what components they have available and then we can order it. So we don't have to go and type in every single one. So let's see how that goes. So for components, I'm gonna use this company called LCSE Electronics. Uh, the reason for that is that they are partnered with JLPCB. Because I ordered the PCBs from JLPCB, I can piggyback my components with the PCBs and save on shipment. So you can do this import um, tool, import the schematic, ugh, schematic, import your bomb in Mauser, DigiKey, Fornell, they all have these capabilities. I'm just gonna do it in this one. So let's see, I don't actually know if they have all the components, but let's see. Bomb tool, then you select your file. And then import. That LED man seems happy. So now we can say this is my manufacturing part number. 
uh, not important to care about that and quantity those are the two you have to worry about the most because this part number is universal and then this one is how many I want to, I need to order for one board so I've got a five board so it'll be times of five so let's see what happens next there you can see my capacitors pop up I need 50 because they're so small but if you look at the price 54 it's fine uh, they've got this in stock and here you can see the part match confidence so they're pretty confident that they ha have the correct component that we wanted um, but you can also override them so let's see uh, that's fine so let's say I'm happy uh, let's just make all the minimum quantities so it might be sometimes when you look at this realize that you should maybe order more PCBs or just keep extra components on stock either way it doesn't matter and you can see 11 for one board will cost me $11 or I can say I want five and we 58 and I can just add to cart um, yeah so some of them are in stock so they will warn you if there's a back order um, so you can just go down you don't have to have it straight away Yeah, this back order this back order so maybe sometimes better because this will only arrive like next year and I'm quite impatient uh, and then you can choose your own shipping or whatever uh, once you go past this uh, choose it and you go to secure checkout you can actually say I've got a PCB uh, order with you guys uh, please add it to that order and then you can save money so that is how I will order my components so I order my PCB from jail PCB order up my components so I'll order my PCBs from jail PCB and so for five is seven dollars plus shipment which is twenty five dollars and then forty seven dollars for my components so I'm looking for five five of them for about yeah eighty dollars which is quite expensive but once you do higher volumes it does get cheaper um, but yeah <laughs> PCB design is not a cheap hobby but it's fun forget I actually want to add a stencil to this because I'm gonna stencil it and um, put it through my reflow oven uh, so at the bottom here you can say stencil with the PCB but then you just have to put the gerbers again so the stencil is basically just a sheet of metal with holes in where your component footprints are and you put some solder paste over it so that it it can um, you can solder the components to the board so I will take it. You can leave the settings as it is. Um, stencil side, top, bottom. I need two stencils for the top and bottom. Oh, or we can do it one. So we can one. So you do pay extra for it, uh, but it's worth it if you've got fine pitch components. If you have a reflow oven, otherwise just solder by hand or hot egg gun. Great. So in 20 minutes, we ordered a PCB, ordered components, um, and there was quite easy uh, not too difficult so this can also be done with KiCad. so you can generate the Excel spreadsheet you can generate Gerbers so PCB design is a general skill to have it is not not stuck to one uh, tool to use so I will get this boards in let's say seven days and then we will start populating it so I'll make a video about me populating it uh, I'm gonna solder some I'll put it through the reflow oven that's gonna be quite fun um, just thinking we're gonna have two sided boards so I'll probably hand solder the top or I will see what we do great guys thanks again for your help with this design uh, it was really awesome to do it every Sunday with you guys and just yeah all the help you've given me the chats the laughs uh, until the next stream until the next project we're working on a cool project for the next one uh, but of course all our designs are always freely available on our discord channel link below you can get the designs as is open source so you can build yourself um, yes guys i hope this helped i just wanted to show you guys how i order my components order my pcb and a design that you guys helped with so have a great week i hope all your designs work first time right mine never does <laughs> but i know you guys can do it uh yeah guys till next time bye